scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The foundation for understanding ministry is that ministry, listen very carefully, ministry is derived from a spiritual state, not just what you do. Hallelujah. The foundation for ministry is your motif and your motivation. Your love for God. Genuine ministry is derived from your love for God. And then any activity that you engage in that gives you the opportunity to reveal Jesus and to bring him glory is called ministry. So ministry has nothing to do with the religiosity of the activity. Colossians 1, 4, 17 says, Say unto Archippus, Take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. So we receive that ministry in the Lord, not from the Lord. You have to be in the Lord, walking and growing in him. And then when his love consumes you, are we together? Any activity that is derived, a response to your love for Jesus Christ and intended to reveal him and bring him glory is called ministry. This is powerful. That means you can be a preacher and not a minister. You can be a singer or a musician or whatever it is. You can be around spiritual activities and yet you are not in ministry because it is not the activity that defines ministry. It is the motif and the intent. Hallelujah. It's important to get this concept right so that when I say who is a minister, that would be the next concept. Naturally, you know now that a minister is beyond a preacher. Is that true? A minister is not one who has the privilege to hold the mic and teach. Uh -uh. He is a minister if his preaching or teaching is motivated by his love for Jesus and intended to reveal Jesus and glorify Jesus. Otherwise, he's just a preacher. That means, is it possible to still be in ministry even if you have to fulfill the pulpit? fulfill the mic fulfill every other thing can i still be in ministry by this definition absolutely the pandemic taught us a very serious lesson that we needed to redefine our concept and our ideas about ministry that means if for any reason i do not have congregants come together and have an opportunity to teach them can i still be in ministry the answer is yes, provided my motivation remains my love for Jesus and the intent of my activities remain to reveal him and to bring him glory. I am in ministry. Now, just for an illustration, please watch this. There is a gentleman here who is holding the camera, snapping around. Do you believe that in God's mind, this man can be doing the same thing with what I'm doing right now. Because it is not the activity, 
By reason of social stratification and honor, you may clap for me first before him because it looks like I'm more important than him in as much as we define, you know, relevance and all of that. But once his heart, if this art of snapping around is motivated by his love for Jesus and intended to be a contributor to make sure that you keep memories as revealing Jesus, what he is doing is called ministry. Are we together now? Yes. When a woman, as I would always use this expression, if a woman gets married and gets pregnant and the baby she's carrying like Hannah, she says, Lord, my, my prayer is that you use this baby in my womb to become a tool for kingdom advance. That act of pregnancy and giving birth is called ministry. Are you learning now? If because of your love for Jesus and your desire to see his kingdom come, you get into business or you get into any circle of influence and God blesses you, you become wealthy and then you see to it that there is comfort and convenience as far as kingdom come is concerned. Your act of doing business, bringing money and being wealthy is called ministry. So a minister is not necessarily a preacher. A preacher is only a minister if his motivation is his love for Jesus and then the goal of using the platform of preaching is to reveal Jesus and to bring him glory. I don't know if we have this definition clear. Very, very important. Now, if I say all the ministers, don't stand. But if I say all the ministers, stand. If you remain seated, then we have to look closely and know what is wrong. You see that now. Hitherto, if I had said all the ministers, stand. You say, well, I'm not a pastor. But now you know. All the ministers mean all who genuinely love Jesus. And are determined that every activity in their lives will reveal him. And be a contribution to kingdom come. Stand. That's what I said. Please say, I am a minister. Convincingly, one more time. I am a minister. Please say, I am in ministry. Thank you. If it is true that you are a minister, if it is true that you are in ministry, based on this definition, then we can proceed further. So when we say a minister of the gospel, what we generally mean is that you are in the fivefold as revealed in Ephesians chapter, Ephesians chapter 4, where we got the theme for the conference. The Bible says he led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men. The gifts there are not talents. They are not spiritual gifts. The gifts are men. He gave men as gifts to men. Are we together now? And this gift, he called them apostles. He gave unto some apostles, to some prophets, to some evangelists, to some pastors and teachers. Why did he give them? Please give us the scripture, Ephesians chapter 4 from verse... Um, would that be 11? Let's see. Ephesians 4 media beautiful thank you why did he give that verse 12 now tells us why he says he gave these gifts that we call the fivefold verse 12 for the perfecting or the maturing of the saints the word perfecting there means to grow to build to mature the saints now I, I wish we can have it projected because I want to correct something there and then we would begin to teach. Verse 12 now. Verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints. Please look up. For the work of the ministry. When you read this, you will think what Paul was saying is that to perfect the saints... And then for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. But hear what he's saying. Paul is saying 
the fivefold, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and pastors are actually the gifts that prepare the ministers. That the ministers now matured can do the work of the ministry. So the ministers are not really the men of God as you call it. The ministers are the gifts or the, 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 the gifts. The men of God are the gifts that now prepare the ministers to do the work of the ministry. What is the work of the ministry? Kingdom advance. We're going to discuss that. Are you seeing now? I'm not insulting your theology. You can, I'm just giving perspective as per what we're dealing with. This is very important because for as long as your idea of the minister is the pastor, the reverend, the bishop, and the man of God, the apostles, and the prophet, you are not wrong, but you are not completely right. He gave gifts to men. The gifts are not talents. He gave men as gifts to men. Those gifts now are mandated to prepare the body of Christ so that the body of Christ now matured can do the work of the ministry. And then it says for the edifying of the body of Christ till we come to a state, verse 13. It says until we attain a state called the unity of faith. Hallelujah. And of the knowledge of the Son of God until we come into a perfect man. The measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. When you read the, the scriptures that follow, it says, Not to stow and fro by every wind of doctrine, not the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive. So he's, he's saying the gifts, those we call men and women of God. Of course, you can call them ministers. I, I, I understand. But now because we are doing, this is a conference that is methodically giving us spiritual intelligence. Those you call the men and the women of God are the gifts that now prepare the ministers. Hallelujah. Hmm. So every time you talk about ministers, see that on one hand, you are right to talk about the fivefold, but in addition to the fivefold, every believer who truly loves Jesus and every believer who is about revealing Jesus with his life, with his profession, and everything around him comes under that category too. Praise the name of the Lord. The second thing I want us to get is our corporate mandate as believers. Now, as individuals, Equa Plateau Church has its theme and its vision, the mandate that it runs with. Is that true? Several ministries, para ministries, um, you know, organizations here would have their visions that define why they exist. I want you to know that as believers, regardless denomination, regardless your spiritual affiliation, regardless your spiritual experience, we have a corporate mandate that binds us. And I want to reveal this to you. Two scriptures. John chapter 1 and we'll read 6 and 7. John chapter 1, 6 and 7. Therein lies the corporate mandate for every believer as far as kingdom come is concerned. The Bible says there was a man sent from God. Please say after me, I am sent from God. This is a very powerful revelation. You, were, you only pass through the womb of your mother but you were sent from God. You have to be conscious of that divine identity. If you know you are sent from God, then you can agree that you can be a gift to the world. Are we together? Sent from God, and then you pass through Plateau State, Taraba State, Lagos, Abuja. This is only the geography where your physical body found expression, but you are a man sent from God and the Bible says whose name was John why did he come verse 7 
This is our corporate mandate. May I request that we please read it together if you do not mind. Ready? One to read. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. That's it. For as long as God gives you the gift of life, you are alive on earth today. This represents your corporate mandate. That the reason why I have come here is that I have come for a witness, to bear witness to the light that through my witness, men might believe. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, Jesus was giving his final words before he would leave to heaven. And he made a very interesting statement, verse 8. He says, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And then he says, you shall be witnesses. Very interesting word, witnesses. He never said you shall be men of God. He never said you shall be businessmen. He never said you shall be a pharmacist, a doctor, an engineer. He never said you shall be a parent. He said you shall be Every other thing you call yourself is just the geography of the witness. But you are a witness. Who is a witness? A witness is a validator. Many of us here are into legal practice. You do not need a witness in the court of law until there is a contention. Is that true? Yes. So the assignment of a witness is to make sure that a statement that was made remains as true. Every time you contend with a statement, the judge will ask you, do you have a witness? The assignment of a witness is to be the validator of a claim. Listen, there are many things that God said in the Bible. There are many things Jesus said about God and himself. And Satan and his cohorts are all about the earth, disproving the integrity of God. And like that righteous judge, he's asking, where are the witnesses? That will show creation that everything I said is true. Are we together now? So more than looking at yourself as a preacher. More than looking at yourself as a doctor, a pharmacist, a professor, a learned colleague, a successful person in the oil and gas industry. From a kingdom perspective, you are a witness. Your assignment, you see... Terrorists understand this concept. So, a terrorist can actually send one of their... You are wrong. As far as he's concerned, I am a terrorist. That means the believer, even though you may have your geography of witness, we're getting there shortly, you must have this, this mindset that I am a witness more than what I do this is my state I am a witness a validator of a claim there is as a preacher there is something you are validating as a career person there is something you are validating claims that Jesus made in scripture are we together now I told us that our corporate mandate let me put it in a structured way so you can write our corporate mandate as believers is that in and through our lives Jesus is revealed and Jesus is glorified our corporate mandate as believers is that in and through our lives Jesus is revealed and Jesus is glorified. That means no matter what you become and no matter what you do, if kingdom come cannot find expression through your life, through that job, as far as God is concerned, you were only the practitioner of whatever career, but not a witness. I can tell you the reason why darkness continues to loom around our horizon is because there are many preachers, there are many career people, there are many business people, but there are few witnesses. Few witnesses. 
May God find witnesses in this place. In the name of Jesus Christ. The first dimension of the gospel, the message that saves. Now, the second dimension of the gospel I told us yesterday is the ideology that transforms. This is very powerful. Please write the word ideology down. If you do not mind, please write that word down. Ideology. Ideology comes from the word idea. The word idea comes, it connotes a value system, a mindset, a way of thinking. Now we're discussing kingdom. Your ideology is a sum total of your perspectives, your viewpoints, your mindset. Please do right. That your ideologies represent a sum total of your value systems, a sum total of your perspectives, your viewpoint. There are a number of cameramen doing their work while this service is going on and every one of them is standing at an angle. Say for instance, the gentleman standing at this angle may not be able to capture the people behind him. Is that true? Now if he's asked to convey everything that happened in this meeting from his perspective some people will be lost out of the meeting but that does not mean they were not there it was the limitation of his perspective are we together now this is very very powerful because there is this kingdom you see has a value system the value system is like a software is a value system that seeks to enthrone christ and his purposes so there is the dimension of the gospel as the message that saves an individual. But it is the value system that leads to societal transformation. Without the value system of the kingdom, it is impossible for a territory to be changed. You may have individuals who are saved, but the territory will continue to plunge into decadence. Do you know why? Because every territory operates based on value systems mindsets we call them a mindset is a sustained thinking pattern that is derived from various means number one culture number two your past experience number three your level of exposure number four your relationships number five the summation of your experience is good or bad they, they construct an idea about God, about life, about success, about failure, about Satan. Respectfully speaking, I submit to you. Did you know that if you travel almost anywhere around the world, there are places where Nigerians live. And you do not need to know where they, maybe where they do business, restaurants. And you can enter a Nigerian restaurant and you don't need to ask if this is Nigerian restaurant. They will replicate Nigeria verbatim. Are we, is, is that true? Yeah. When you go into the U.S. Embassy, if you were blindfolded and you suddenly appeared there, you, and they told you you were in America, you would believe. Because there's nothing there. It is not, the building is a reflection of a value system and a mindset. Are we together now? Yes. Until this is the key to territorial transformation. I'm showing you why certain territories remain the way they are. In spite of revivals and preachings and conferences and prayer and fasting. It looks like the territory remains unchanged. It is a reflection of a value system that has become a stronghold over that territory. Is God helping us? The ideology that transforms. That means if I look at a believer in Kano and a believer in Lagos and a believer in London and a believer in US, regardless the the geography there is a way you should speak there is a way you should act that makes me know that you are my brother you are my sister 
because we have been cultured in a similar way since we come from the same kingdom. Do you agree with me on that? We are unable to change our territories because for many we have not tapped into that dimension of the gospel that is an ideology that transforms. We know the message that saves through evangelism but most have not learned the value system that transforms society. And let me tell you this, it is a big deal that our societies are transformed. Do you know why? Because like Lot, you can be a righteous man, but if the name of where you are staying is Sodom and Gomorrah, you will still suffer even though you are a righteous man. Is that true? For instance, respectfully speaking, we see that Africa and even our dear nation has suffered from corruption. My question is, are you corrupt as a person? No, I believe. And I hope. Hallelujah. But then, every one of us here has had to suffer the consequences of corruption. Is that true? This is what happens when a territory is not transformed. I will tell you this. It is not buildings that transform territories. No. It is not the vegetation that transform territories. All of those things are report cards. Ideologies transform territories. For as long as we sustain the thinking and the ideology that kept us where we were, there would be no room for improvement regardless how we go around it. Are we to, is that true? Now, let me say this respectfully speaking. From, from a developmental standpoint, if we are to switch nations and over 200 million Nigerians are suddenly moved to the U.S. and everybody in U.S. is moved to Nigeria and we say nobody travels again. You are not going, no coming out like Jericho. No going in and no coming out. After 10 years, let me tell you what will happen. Are you ready to hear what will happen? Or do you know it already? Praise the name of the Lord. Another example. Now, this is respectfully speaking. Let's assume that there's somebody who just cleans in an office. That's his work. And maybe the person receives 20,000 or 30,000 and now he's complaining and he said my boss is not doing anything all he does is to sit down behind a laptop signing some files and he's receiving millions in a room with AC and look how cruel and wicked here is my proposition switch them just switch them that means pick the man and say for the next one month you will be in this office let me attempt to describe for you what both of them will do. Are you ready? Let's start with the CEO who now goes to the gate. The first thing he's going to do is he's going to look for a system to automate the opening and the closing of that gate. He can't be pushing it like that. Now watch closely. Watch what is happening to the gate. His mindset is reflecting on the gate. The second thing that happens is his sense of courtesy and decorum both in terms of dressing and communication will provide the solution there at the gate so there may not even be need to come inside that office again are we together the third thing that happens is that he's going to build quality relationships and soon somebody through relationships will put a canopy there and fix up that place let's go to our man in the office let's find out that there's i'm going somewhere please pay attention let me tell you the first thing the man there number one he knows he should not be there so the first thing he would do is to open the fridge what is here what look at this drinks assorted drinks assorted biscuits and he will now begin to eat and carry a very important document and use it to hold because he does not know the value of the information there 
That is the document that represents the contract the company is pursuing. He will use it to wrap maybe bones or something there and now he will eat it and keep the place will be unkept. That room will start reflecting his mindset. It will be dirty, unkept. Eventually he will be frustrated and then he will blame it on the building and run out. So the question is, who was really the CEO? Was it the person or the mindset? Let me give you the last example. Thank you for following. Let's say we have two people stand here and one person is called a powerful man of God and another person is called an armed robber. If both of them drop dead, who died? Do you call the dead body a man of God? Do you call the dead body an armed robber? You call them dead bodies. So who was really alive? If it is true that both of them are now dead bodies subject to the same thing, what made one greater than the other? The mindset and the ideology. Hallelujah. Now, if say the armed robber comes to Equa Plateau Church and listens to the gospel being preached and he comes out to surrender his life to Christ and now that gentleman becomes mentored five years down the line. He's now a powerful man of God. Same body, same voice. What changed? A naive young man who holds his admission letter into the College of Medicine. You call him a medical student. Fast forward 10, 20 years, that person is a doctor attending to patients. Same voice, same everything. So what was the lecturer educating? What qualified him to be called a doctor? It wasn't like he became muscular or less muscular necessarily. It was the mindset. You see, dear people of God, this right here is where the battlefield of transformation is. Until you are willing to submit your ideologies to divine vetting so that that which is inconsistent with the character of the kingdom is edited from your life, there is no possibility of change. It doesn't matter whether it is an anointing service, respectfully speaking, a communion service, prayer and fasting, night vigil, it will end up being a burdensome ritual until and unless your mindset is malleable enough to be transformed. Now, let me tell you what transformation is not. Transformation does not necessarily mean being exposed in terms of westernization. Because for many of us, we think transformation means I used to take pure water and now I take water that, you know, um, not necessarily. There are many, many, many wrong things people have learned in a, in, in a bit to show that they are transformed. Are we together? Secular enlightenment is not necessarily transformation. The reference for the believer's transformation is scripture, not territory. Let me repeat. The reference for the believer's transformation is scripture, not territory. That means learning the culture of another territory that seems to be more superior than another territory is not transformation. No. It is true that when you travel out of this nation, you may meet a society that is a lot more civil. There's decorum, there's law and order. And by staying there and learning their ways, generally, your approach to life will be more orderly. There will be greater sense of dexterity. I agree. But that does not translate to transformation. Transformation for the believer has its reference from scripture. If the word of God is not the basis for the new ideas that you have, you are only moving from fire to an ocean. You will still die. It's only a matter of time. If you come out of a burning fire and you fall into an ocean, are you free? It's just another kind of oppression. Maybe you will last longer. In fact, you will be surprised that you may die faster. The fire has heat and pain. But ask Jonah. 
the water will have whales and fishes that can prey on you. But, but are you getting what I'm teaching you now? The ideology that transforms. So, you may ask me, what then is the difference between two believers who love Jesus, serve him sincerely, all born again? I will tell you, the difference among many other factors is that one has submitted himself to the ideas of scripture and is willing to be disloyal even to age-long ideas sometimes uh, you know our loyalty respectfully speaking to very old cultural old sociological ideas we feel guilty because it looks like if i have to give this up to pick up the idea of scripture it makes me feel weak so even in the midst of pain we will still hold on even in the midst of failure we will still hold on to wrong negative and destructive ideas the key to transformation is not discussion is the willingness to submit ourselves to scripture based I emphasize scripture based not western based respectfully speaking not european based not american based not asian based it must come from above because it is only he that comes from above that is above all hallelujah this is very powerful seated here tonight and following by way of television or the internet are men and women who are asking questions why is my life not counting why am i not making the kind of definite advancement that i need to make in my life in spite of the fact that i love jesus i have an answer the answer is found in ephesians 4 and verse 18. it says having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their mind apostle paul was teaching us and he said the assignment of the god of this world is to blind the minds of people hallelujah very very important concept so we must be willing therefore to probe and vet meticulously where we got our mindsets from my beliefs as a summation of everything that I know where did it come from and can I tell you we must be willing no matter how long we've held on to this mindset if and when we find out that they are not kingdom compliant and they are not pro scripture we must sustain the unashamedness to replace these old ideas with that which is consistent with the kingdom this is the only condition to transform our society. Remember our teaching yesterday? When Adam fell and the Lord came to him in the garden in the cool of the day. He said, Adam, where are you? Adam said, I heard your voice and I hid because I was naked. Next question, who told you? Who told you you cannot prosper? Who told you you must live in anger and bitterness? Who told you you cannot walk by love and the dignity of kingdom integrity and prosper? Who told you that you cannot enjoy longevity? Who told you you cannot enjoy health? Who told you that your life cannot be a testament of God's mercy? Someone told you. It's time to vet that voice. Because Paul said there is as it were many voices and that none of them is without significance. This conference is a moment of deep reflection to be able to sit down and say, why are things not working in my life? Why is my life not reflecting the glory of God? Remember what we said about giving excuses yesterday, that every time you transfer blames, you also transfer authority. If my life is not working, I must take responsibility under God and find out what could be wrong could it be my belief is there something i have believed about god or not believed about god that is making satan to seem to prevail over me is there something i do not believe what is my ideology about life respectfully speaking 
For some of us, we believe that life is an endless circle of struggle and pain where nothing ever happens well. Now, if you hear teachings that have to communicate the favor of God, you may reject it, not because you are wrong, but that experience was not captured in your background. So when God says, I want to bless you, you may not believe it. Are we learning? Please write this down. The key to kingdom advance, the key, I will define kingdom advance shortly. The key to kingdom advance is evangelism and influence. The key to kingdom advance is evangelism and influence. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Please look up. Thank you. I have given you a very powerful key. Every time you say, Lord, we desire your kingdom to come or your kingdom to be advanced, advancement of the kingdom will be at the mercy of two keys. Key number one is evangelism. And respectfully speaking, we have done marvelously well on the plateau. And even across the middle belt and the north, there are people who have spent their lives and spent their days seeing to it that they move from place to place, region to region. Some of them on account of that commitment have today joined the cloud of witnesses. We have done well, but I submit to you that there is a dimension of the gospel that we may be missing. It's called influence. Let's define influence, please. What is influence? Influence is the capacity to have an effect. I'll take it slowly so we write. Is God helping us tonight? Influence is the capacity to have an effect on the mindsets and the convictions of a person and a territory. I'll take it again. Influence is the capacity to have an effect on the mindsets and convictions of a person, an individual, and then of a territory. Influence is the capacity to have an effect on the mindset of a person, the convictions of a person, and that of a territory. Hmm. Hallelujah. Please give us Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. I want to show you through the life of Jesus the power of influence. If it is true that our lives and our territories are a reflection of our mindsets, ideas, and convictions, then we need to investigate who is the person who is behind the scene manipulating our mindset? Because that means that is the person who is defining our civilization. Do we agree on that? Verse Mark chapter 1. Let's begin our reading from verse 21. The Bible says, And they went into Capernaum. This is Jesus. And straightway, on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue, Jesus now, and taught. Next verse. The Bible says they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. Uh -huh. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. 25. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. Go ahead. Go ahead, media. And when the unclean spirit had torn him, he cried with a loud voice, and he came out of him. Uh-huh. And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, 
what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits and they do obey him. 28. Please read with me if that if you can see. Ready? One, two, read. And immediately what happened? His fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. Now I'll continue the reading myself. Next verse please. And forthwith when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. And Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever. And anon they tell him of her. Be patient please. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And immediately the fever left her and she ministered unto them. And at evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him, this is the result of the influence. They brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. 33. And he came, oh dear. What, what verse is that? Please continue. And all the city, we're reading 33 now. All the city were gathered together at the door. Can we be patient to let them? Okay. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. The Bible says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place to pray. Verse, And Simon and all they that were with him followed after him. May 47 be your testimony. Yeah. Are you ready? Please read with me. One, two, read. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. This is the epitome of influence when all men seek for thee. All men there means all people groups. There is what you can have that only old people will look for you. There is what you can have that only young people will look for you. There is what you can have that only your tribesmen will look for you. There is what you can have that only intellectuals will look for you. But there is what when you possess, all men will seek for you. This is the definition of influence. I will tell you this. There has to be a mechanism that the church will bring to the table that will compel all nations to now begin to come. Chasing sinners one by one is becoming a risk today because of the reality of the time. There has to be an intelligent invention and there is, it is called influence. I define influence as the ability to compel men to buy into your ideologies without using force or cruelty. It's called influence. That means you are able to exert um, a force upon men Causing them to buy into your thinking and your ideology without oppressing them is called influence. Believers, we must trust God for grace that in addition to be people of evangelism, we must obtain grace from God to rise to positions of kingdom influence. If we miss out on the influence part, the program of God is going to suffer. Now, I don't have time to teach this, but I'll just give you four pillars of influence and then we'll jump to the last stop topic and then we're done. Thank you for your patience. I'll give it to you just in summary. Pillars of influence. That means if you want to become a person of kingdom influence for the sake of his majesty, there are four pillars. Number one, the first pillar that controls influence is called growth and transformation. You command influence to the degree to which you contend for growth and transformation. What does it mean to be transformed? To sustain superior belief systems. Our world will always gravitate towards people that they perceive 
to have superior belief systems. Hallelujah. Very important. The second pillar of influence is called value and productivity. Value and productivity. My sincere apologies. I'm just running through it so I can't give us all the scriptures that are there. But let's try. At least let me give us two. Proverbs 18 and 16. Please write under value and productivity. Proverbs 18 and 16. And then Exodus chapter 31 from verse 1 to 5. The second pillar of influence is value and productivity. That means nobody will seek for you until they perceive you to be valuable and to be productive. Hallelujah. Pillar number three, wisdom and excellence. The third pillar that compels influence is wisdom and excellence. Daniel chapter 5, please, for reference, 12 to 15. Daniel chapter 5, 12 to 15. The Bible says that Daniel sustained an excellent spirit even through Babylon. Daniel 5, 12 to 15. Then Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. In fact, I'd like us to read Ephesians 3 and verse 10. Let me quote it for time's sake. Paul was speaking to the church in Ephesus and he says to the intent, 3 and 10, to the intent that now, unto principalities and powers in heavenly places but might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. That means there is a level of wisdom and excellence that need to proceed from the church. Are we learning? A quick recap, the first pillar is growth and transformation. I didn't give us a scripture for that. Let's, let's do Psalm 78 and verse 41 for that point now. They limited God in the wilderness by saying, can God make a way for them? And then Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Psalm 78, 41, Philippians 4 and verse 8. Hallelujah. The second is value and productivity. The third is wisdom and excellence. The fourth, are you ready? The fourth pillar that controls influence in our world is wealth and abundance. Hmm. Wealth and abundance. I assure you by God that for as long as the church does not seem to probe into the subject of wealth and abundance from a kingdom standpoint, now, I'm not talking about marketing of flesh, materialism, and some of these wrong things. There are, there are many abuses in the body of Christ. I agree. But just because of the presence of something that was mismanaged does not mean we throw the entire baby under the bathwater. I can tell you this. When the church becomes poor, we will lose influence. It's as simple and as honest as that. Let me show you a scripture that I hope will bless you. Genesis 42, verse 1 and 2. If we continue to sell the idea that it is comfortable to remain poor and remain in economic bankruptcy, we may be doing ourselves and our children more harm than we know. While there is need to cut away from the overemphasis on money, 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 materialism that has destroyed people today, people have lost integrity completely. I agree. But within the confines of scripture, we must introduce this truth and teach it in a way that empowers believers. Now, when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, please look at this scripture very carefully. I don't have a problem with the corn. The problem is the location. Egypt is not where you should go to. Yet, that is where there is corn. Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt. He told his sons, why do you look on one another? Verse 2. And he said, behold, I have heard that there is corn. Where? Get you down thither. And buy from us from there that we may live and not die. Even a man of God without corn will die. Jacob was a covenant man. 
and death was facing him right before his face because of the absence of corn. Do you know how Israel became slaves in Egypt? This was the journey. The search for corn took them there and when they found out that it was a place of corn, they stayed there till Joseph died and they became slaves. Hunger will always take Israel to Egypt. Let me repeat. Hunger will always take God's covenant people to the place where they should not go. Unfortunately, when Satan wants to attract believers to a life of decadence and decline spiritually, he will manipulate the economy such that only Egypt will have bread. And sooner or later, believers will begin to quietly navigate towards Egypt. And when they go there, they won't buy the bread and go back. Remember, the intention was just to quickly buy and go back. But when you find out that bread is only in Egypt, you stay there. So when we say things like, our children are following wrong men and the rest, are, is it, <laughs> it will continue until there is an alternative. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. But that is the truth. By the time a mother is watching her child die in the hospital, needing 2.5 million for surgery, and you say, don't worry, don't compromise, don't do anything. God will provide. And she's watching her child cry and say, mommy, will you let me die? Let me tell you, pressure has a way of initiating things you never imagined you will do. I, by reason of what I do, I've had the honor and the privilege to talk to kings, professionals, politicians. I can tell you, many people are intrinsically sincere. Hunger took them to Egypt. Now they became slaves in Egypt for 430 years. And when Moses came to advocate their exodus, you know what happened? Moses stood before Pharaoh, his half-brother, now Ramesses, who had now become the Pharaoh of Egypt, and said, Thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go. Hear what he said. The people, we are giving them straw for free while they walk. So the remaining time they have, they can use it to serve God. Don't give them straw again. Let them look for it by themselves. And they said, Moses, forget about this, this exodus idea. We are willing to stay as slaves. My Bible says the borrower will always be slave to the lender. So intelligent people, what is another word for a slave? So if the nations want to make slavery out of Africa, how do they make it? Your Bible says it. It says the rich will rule over the poor. I hope you are not misunderstanding what I'm teaching you. It is true. Let me tell you this. The gospel is free, but the means to take it to the lost. I always will say this, that the name of Jesus is heavy. It takes resources to lift it up for nations, the nations to see. The dead body of Jesus is hanging on that cross and no man had the influence to bring it down except one man of influence called Joseph of Arimathea. Is it in your Bible? He used his influence, his wealth, and his relationship to now go to Caesar and say, please, release the body. Your salvation required influence to happen. The tomb, he took responsibility. He said, no problem, it is my estate, it's my tomb. I will bury Jesus there. Otherwise, the body of Jesus would have remained on that cross. You would never would have been able to say, oh death, where is your sting? And oh grave, where is your victory? Because someone of influence participated in redemption. They buried Jesus there and he resurrected by the glory of the Father. The fourth pillar is wealth and abundance. The fifth, the fifth pillar I simply call it the supernatural. Please write it down and I'll explain to you what I mean. The fifth pillar, you want to compel influence, 
it has to be at the instance of the supernatural. What is the supernatural? Outsourcing results and possibilities beyond this three-dimensional realm. I can tell you that as believers, we have an advantage. We can tap into the supplies and the blessings that reside with the heavens and produce results here on earth that is not given unto mere men to produce. This is powerful. They follow Jesus because how do you meet a woman who has been down of fever and he simply holds her lovingly and says, stand up and it is done. I will follow such a man. Notice that they even wanted to make him king. These people were hungry and he multiplied loaf and he said, we will make you king immediately. Whether it's election time or not, this level of results, we want it. Can I tell you this? I hate to say this, but it is unfortunate. You will so be surprised at how many believers still patronize native doctors. I don't mean in disguise, direct native doctors. You turn back and enter. There are many people, church goers. You know why? Because before they got born again, that was what was there. And it seemed to have some results. The man will give a charm and make concoction. And you will find out that people are coming to buy the products. Now you tell them, throw away that charm. And he threw it away. And find out that he was suffering. His life became miserable. One day, he will go back and say, sir, I don't know if you are still available. Let me share with you a story. Am I boring you? true story back then when I was still in Zaria one woman true story now I used to have counseling sessions and the woman came with her daughter and she said she needed a child so desperately something began to happen in the life of the girl and she was almost it was becoming a psychosomatic condition and so true story now she came and said that um, she needed to confess something. I said, what is it, madam? And she said, because of she, she had to stay long not having a child. And, you know, people started suggesting, do this. There's somebody is not exactly bad and so on and so forth. She landed herself by the river and met this man and cried and said, I need a child. I'm tired of this. And the man said, that's all right. I will give you that child. But here is the condition. True story that when that child becomes 20 years on the dot, bring that child back to this place. There is a sacrifice that must be done. Failure to do so, everything will start going haywire. And out of desperation, said, no. she said, but you are an old man, you will be dead by then. And she said, he pointed a young boy who was playing around and said, this boy will be the one seated here. Satan has a program for continuity. By the time that lady became 20 years on the dot, everything started falling apart in her life. And she didn't know what was happening. And so she came to her mother, you know, a lady talking to her mother and said, Mommy, I don't know what is happening. And the mom kept quiet. And so she went to counsel with some women. And some said, let's pray. Some women said, you better run, run to that place quickly. And so they decided to come to me. And I said, my God, look at this. Now, you will see such an innocent person and feel that this person is very innocent. You are right. Except that it will take the power of God to correct that anomaly. There are many homes today that are a product of this thing. There are many lives today. There are many territories. No wonder you find out that there are territories where the gospel does not seem to thrive. You get there, missionaries will tell you. You get there, you love the Lord. One week, two weeks, something will happen. And you would have to leave that territory. It takes the supernatural to compel and to bring influence. When Jesus came and they started seeing possibilities that were not affordable as far as the world of men were concerned, they started to follow him. Anyone who walks with these five pillars must become an individual of influence growth and transformation 
sustaining superior belief systems number two value and productivity that you become productive always number three wisdom and excellence number four wealth and abundance number five the supernatural let me wrap up by touching on the last subtopic the geography of witness Micah chapter 4 please verse 1 and 2 blessed be the name of the Lord Micah chapter 4 mm. but in the last days it shall come to pass that Equa Plateau Church shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and all people shall flow to it. Verse 2, many nations will come. Very soon we'll stop going. Something God is doing in our midst. Was it not John Wesley that said, set yourself on fire and the nations will come to watch you burn? And let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob and he will teach us his ways. In 1972, as you know, there were two great generals of the gospel. One of them, Lauren Cunningham, you know him. Youth with a mission. The other one was Bill Bright, the founder of Campus Crusade for Christ. Both of them went to bed and they woke up with the same dream. In that dream, they saw seven mountains. And that these mountains, they were told, were the spheres of influence that control and shape culture. Please, you have to listen to this as I wrap up. And from this, they came up with the concept that has come to be known in the body of Christ today as the seven mountain concept. The Bible says that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above all other mountains. That is influence. It was a prophetic revelation of what would happen before Christ comes. That suddenly the church of Christ will gain such dominance and influence and will now begin to rise above all other mountains. Now mountains in scripture don't just talk of obstacles alone. Mountains in scripture talk of spheres of influence or mind control systems. Hallelujah. That these are the mountains that shape culture. Every one of us here, every church on the plateau, every individual on the plateau and across this nation is under the influence of one or more of these mountains if the purposes of christ would be preserved it will be through allowing jesus and his purposes to penetrate through these mountains one more scripture and then i'll discuss them and then we'll pray mark 16 15. Mark 16, 15. Please let's read it together if you can see it. Ready? One, two, read. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Please leave that scripture there. Let's read it one more time. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world. Hallelujah. Were intelligent people. Now let's look very carefully. He told them, go ye into. He never said, go around. That means, in as much as evangelism is powerful, there was something he was saying. Go ye into. If I say, go into a room, what do I mean? To enter and be submerged there. Enter the system. And then he uses all the world. Why did he add all there? How many walls do we have? A logical statement to be go to the world, but he says all the world. It means he was speaking of something else. 
go ye into these systems and spheres of influence and when you get there become an advocate of the purposes of God and ensure that every creature not every man every creature benefits from your influence this is the mandate Jesus gave us more than just going around to talk to people he says enter the system all the world and when you get there your assignment is not just to do business your assignment is not just to be a professor respectfully speaking your assignment is not just to be a parent he says enter the system let me list for you the seven mountains in every society these spheres of influence are the shapers and the molders of every civilization the shapers and the molders of the ideologies in any and every society there are seven of them are you ready the first sphere of influence that controls men and their activities on earth is the mountain of religion please write it down the mountain of religion This is the sphere of influence that shapes the spiritual conviction of people across a territory. Everybody in a territory believes something. Even an atheist who does not believe anything believes himself. Hallelujah. Can I tell you this? God must find men and women represented in this mountain. This is where preachers come in. The fivefold apostles and prophets. When people get a wrong ideology it largely came from the pulpit Sunday after Sunday in Nigeria we have services somewhere almost every day is that true there is a conference a convention a Bible study a program a prayer meeting a night vigil our churches are full of people who submit themselves without restraint to be mentored spiritually if their spiritual convictions are wrong it means that something wrong is coming from the pulpit the mountain of religion it was because Samuel was properly mentored by Eli that was why he was able to rise even though Eli the later part of his life couldn't you know things went wrong but we must give him the credit that he mentored Samuel. When God spoke to Samuel, he used the voice of Eli. So God will speak to you using the voice of your preacher. The sermons you hear every day. It means we must pray that God will send quality men to our pulpits. Let Satan not train rubbish and send nonsense to mount our pulpits. I say this respectfully speaking. Otherwise, there will be trouble in the next five, ten years. Let me tell you something with Satan. When he finds out that he is unable to capture a generation because of their unbending loyalty, he will let them be and be patient while he prepares for the next generation. This is the tragedy of the West today. In the 60s and the 70s, most of these places you see today that have become a, a place of apology in the west they were places of fire these missionaries and evangelists and men and women of God you read them God's generals all of these mighty people but they made a mistake and I pray we don't make it they were concentrating on advancing the kingdom and forgot their future they left their children behind that was what Pharaoh told Moses we will allow you go let the men go but the children will stay behind Moses said no way we are all going we can't keep our future behind when Satan cannot fight you he will give up on you but you will now come and grow with your future let me tell you this whoever shapes the mind of the children while they grow is the person they will be loyal to when they grow you cannot appear into the future and the adulthood of anyone and claim a stake in their destiny. No. No. It is the reason why we must invest and we must commit to training the children and Sunday school is not a weak ministry. 
That is what gives guarantee to the continuity of Equa Plateau Church. Hallelujah. So when Satan found out that some of those black Americans and those preachers would not give up and would serve Jesus unto death, he gave up on that generation and came back and met their children who were at home, unattended to by the busy parents who were preaching the gospel. And he said, you know what, I will grow with you. Those little children today are the presidents of nations. The person who trained them while they were growing is the one they will be loyal to now that they are grown. Not to sound condemning, but I am amazed at the level of enlightenment of this generation of our children coming up. They will ask you questions that you cannot sleep. As a small child, my teacher said, many of us are, I'm coming to family, but many of us have ignored this. Let me tell you the truth. Don't just think of where you are. You must think of the next 10 years, the next 20 years. Equa Plateau Church, do not ignore the youth and the children. Whether we like it or not, our parents and even us, if Christ tarries, we will all be gone one day. It's not bad news, except if you are not born again. We will be gone. It's the reason why businesses don't last. I don't know any business that is up to 150 years old in Africa. We do not think succession. No. You go to Europe, you will see houses 200 years old. You will see businesses 500 years old, 400 years old. Because they built within it in the system the, a principle for continuity. But many times in our nation and our region, anything that lasts 10 years is old enough to die. religion as I mentioned this this becomes our prayer point even for this conference Lord raise pastors raise missionaries people of integrity and people who love Jesus people who will love Jesus more than money Jesus more than fame Jesus more than ministry Jesus more than titles we should not just wish it we must pray it and trust God to raise people Number two, family. The second sphere of influence that is responsible for shaping the mindsets of people. Family is very important. Hallelujah. Isn't it amazing that as a man of God, when you are counseling people and they tell you they want to get married, you have to verify whether the person they are marrying is of the opposite sex. Whoever, whoever imagined that that would need to happen in the church. Are you marrying a male or a female? It's terrible. Very terrible. Go and read about the Tower of Babel and Sodom and Gomorrah. What brought them to decadence? Do you know that there are places when you go today even to preach, there are things you cannot say. They will jail you. There are restrooms that they are, right now there are court cases happening simply because they designated the restroom male and female. And people say I should have the liberty to enter anyone depending on what I choose to be at that time. And can I tell you, don't think it's far from Nigeria. You will be surprised to know how many people are embracing these ideologies. There are fundings that never happen to institutions and organizations until they agree and accept that they will not fight any, you know, some kind of things. Every arm robber came from a family. Is that true? Every one of these Boko Haram people was born. Can I tell you, every national problem was first a regional problem that was not attended to. Every regional problem was first a community problem that was neglected. And if you keep reducing it, it will end in a family problem that was ignored. I don't believe in abusing children. I don't believe in all of this. But let me tell you the truth. We have to be careful, respectfully speaking, especially with our idea of love. Because what many parents are calling love is a recipe for disaster and destruction. I will apologize at the end of my message, but just allow me to finish. Hallelujah. 
We have to be careful. When we were growing up, there were certain disciplines, whether in Sunday school or it was in secular school or home. There were certain, now you come and meet a small child and he cannot say good morning. He can even be putting his hand in your pocket and remove everything there and run. Oh, come on, please. Something is really wrong. If that person becomes your president, he will do exactly what he's doing. Hallelujah. Family. The first revelation of Jesus that children should see is as displayed by daddy and mommy. That is the first revelation of Jesus. If all that the boy sees is abuse, an irresponsibility even if he does not like it that is the only mindset he has he will become it inevitably hallelujah God must help us and there are people here that God is raising and granting that ministry to help families please don't give up in the name of Jesus Christ may God lift people who can help correct this mindset in the name of Jesus Christ number three very quickly our time is gone I have to end Government and politics. The third mountain that shapes and controls the mindset of people is the mountain of politics and government. Someone was asking me a question and he said, what is my opinion about the Nigerian politics? I said, next question, please. <laughs> Ask me the next question because... I'm not sure that you are ready. I don't know. I'm on air. I don't want to. My perspectives, you see, maybe my perspectives, I'm used to being controversial. My perspectives are usually somewhat disturbing. You cannot select who you want and then ask me to choose any one of them. No. That's not liberty. It's as simple as that. Hallelujah. God has to help us. One policy set by the devil through the guise of the parliament or government of, and politics can shut the church regardless of our prayer and rolling on the ground. One person. Go and read your Bible in the book of Daniel. When Daniel was praying unto God, it was affecting the spirits of the Medes and the Persians. And they had to come through politics to enact. They didn't say we are attacking Daniel. That would be too direct. But they came and, and they, they agreed on a vote. And they said for 30 days, I pray that a day will not come when they would have to censor the church and send sermons from maybe a federal registry so you receive yours by text to preach hallelujah yes sir a particular broadcasting station approached me some years ago and they wanted to put my programs there and when i had a discussion with them i love them i don't condemn them but i was terribly disappointed at the conditions and the things they were putting i said if i do this this way will i be able to go to bed no I said no i'm grateful god bless you but this is not it we must trust god for grace there are some of you who are called into politics it's not just enough to pray we must obtain grace but let me tell you many politicians are not very serious with god that's the reason why when they get there because in politics you have to be in direct fraternity with the realm of the spirit either towards god or some kind of diabolic thing politics will stop you from being neutral you know the number of muslims that come to me for prayers especially during election they don't care they mix anything and they hope one will work at least they are honest while they are crying to you there is some charm somewhere there is another thing somewhere they just know one of them will work and they come once they hear you have results you saying Jesus, you will be surprised they kneel down they watch TV they are not stupid people can I tell you this we don't have the time I'm sorry for stretching you 
But if you ever want to get into politics, you must be able to find a system where priesthood backs you. The formation of king, priest, prophet is a tripartite formation that must never be compromised if you want to do well in government. The reason is that politicians just believe I am a Christian. No, it takes more than being a Christian. There has to be priesthood backing you. Unbelievers know this. Forget the things that you see on TV. Believe me, I know what I'm saying. You will be surprised at the sacrifices. That is why they have confidence regardless your opinion. Their confidence is outsourced from a realm that is not earthly. May God grant us grace to have politicians like Daniel who will be uncompromising and yet will make impact, maximum impact. May God raise even within the plateau in this year and the years that come people across the various tiers of government it's painful and it's unfortunate and I say this respectfully so to know that our students have been kept this long at home I know you are sad it's unfortunate their contemporaries respectfully speaking in private universities and abroad have long gone and you will say life should be equal. It, it won't be, it, it won't balance like that. It will take favor and the grace of God. By the time the gentleman is graduating, he has passed the age for employment. Number four, education. I think I've said that already. Let's just pray that God will raise people. Imagine a professor who is born again, spirit filled with understanding. You can look at a student and know that this student is not just failing because he is dull. There is something more and you can lock your office and say, gentlemen, I know that I teach you in class. I'm a professor, but I'm a witness too. Let us pray. And that one prayer right there, the day that student is returning with his certificate. It is true. We must trust God not just for intellectuals, but people who will use the tool of intellect. I don't know if they've changed it, but many years ago, respectfully speaking, the motto of the Corpus, Islamic Corpus, their association, was serving Islam through the nation. Not serving the nation. No, the nation is a tool. That is the mindset that is given to them. We must trust God. And then education, it shapes our minds. I am praying in the name of Jesus that God will raise quality teachers and quality schools. If God is granting you a grace to build a school, please build it. Don't be afraid. Build it with confidence. We need standards. There are people today, respectfully speaking, who would graduate and you would tell them, write a letter. And they are writing it like a text message. You, like you. I am and you are wondering and this person graduated with something that is you understand what I'm saying 300 and something in jam and they cannot compose themselves to answer an intelligent question corruption has just eaten into the educational sector we have to trust God for grace may God raise institutions through us yeah. next is media media the word media means a channel, a vista. They will interpret good or evil. We understand good or evil from the lens of media. Did you know that as big and as large as Russia is, they have only one media house? Russia is about a little, uh, a little over half of Africa. And they have only one media house because of the power of media. Media can make you believe anything. An enemy can be a saint through media. A saint can be an enemy through media. Media is a powerful perception control system. Hallelujah. We must trust God for grace. To be able to raise and thank God also for social media. Even though it has its own negative effects. It's produced untold distractions. 
But if and when it is used properly, you can project Jesus in a way that will surprise you. Who would have known that I'll be standing from one point and you are speaking and everyone, not just seated on a TV, someone with his phone, with a device, anywhere across the globe. That is a powerful tool for evangelism and soul winning. Media is powerful. Let us not allow that space for Satan alone. We must occupy that space. God grants you grace to set up a media house, a TV station. Go for it in the name of Jesus. Provided you will do it with integrity. I am praying. Do you know? Let me tell you this. I had a vision many years ago. Before probably the first or second Christian media house came to this nation. And I saw 37 media, Christian media stations. I said, where will this be? And looking at it today, I am amazed to see what God has done. Hallelujah. Number six, art and entertainment. That is the sixth mountain of influence. Art and entertainment. I don't want to talk much here. They control our dressing. They control our speech. They control how we understand and celebrate success. We have to trust God for people to rise to this mountain. This is the mountain that influences young people the most. This is the mountain where celebrities are found. This is the mountain where musicians are found. This is the mountain where sportsmen are found. It's amazing how that someone who has been well cultured for many years in one moment can sit under the influence of one or more of these people and destroy their values completely. We need to trust God to have people in the arts and entertainment that can represent the purposes of God. And then finally, the seventh mountain is the mountain of business and finance. This is the mountain that funds every other mountain. Whoever controls the economic flow controls the loyalty of people within a territory. Have you wondered why there is massive kidnapping going on in this nation? And every time those who are the kidnappers are caught, they will tell you they've never enjoyed even 100,000 from that money. So where did the 10 million go to? Where did the 100 million go to? Because there is a central remittance system. You see that now. They understand the power of economy. This service is happening right here. But I am sure the elders will tell you there was a budget for this conference. We have to trust God for people who are genuinely born again. Who love Jesus with all their hearts. And will be trusted with the wealth of the kingdom. For the sake of his majesty. I made up my mind as a man of God. That I would never teach and raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant. I understand the power of economic influence. And I made a commitment that I would teach them the whole counsel of God. To the end that people be empowered. Empowerment is powerful. Hallelujah. I had the honor and the privilege of praying during the thanksgiving of one of the governors when he became a governor. I wasn't supposed to pray for him. I was in a meeting and then I was told he would be coming afterwards and they requested, they say, can I pray for him? I said, fine, that's, that's okay. I saw people in that church that except for the love of Jesus, I should be saying, what are you doing here? Do you know why they came? Because a man of economic means was to be prayed for. There are many people you don't need to invite to church. Just be blessed. They will come. It is true. If you want to speak to people who are seated on that mountain, it will take economic empowerment to be able to communicate the gospel. That is the truth. Because you see, respectfully speaking, wealth comes with pride. So if you are communicating the gospel, you have to sustain some level of economic empowerment for wealthy people to listen to you. Seven mountains. What you call your purpose or your assignment is simply the role that you have to play in one or more of these. 
you are a witness but what you call your assignment is simply this is what I'm leaving with you tonight as we pray God is counting on you for some the mountain of religion like the preachers for some family education government arts entertainment now do you know why I'm saying this because there are several people who sense the call of God upon their life but they think the only way to express the call of God is to be a man of God it's a narrative that has been sold and there are many people who are holding the mic today who should not be in fivefold meaning they were only craving for an expression and since they were told the only way to do ministry is to become a man of God we have people who clearly you will know that this is not their assignment. But if everyone is now told that you can find expression right where you are, this is very powerful. We are going to pray. This is kingdom advance. Let me define it now and then we pray. What then is kingdom advance? Kingdom advancement refers to Any and every scriptural means. Kingdom advance refers to any and every scriptural means deployed. Any and every scriptural means deployed to enthrone Christ and his purposes in the hearts of men and across every strata of human activities. Kingdom advancement refers to every and any scriptural means deployed to advance Jesus Christ and his purposes to enthrone Jesus Christ and his purposes first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities. So the next time you say we are advancing the kingdom. What it means is we will employ every and any scriptural means that can be deployed provided it will end up enthroning Jesus Christ in the hearts of men, evangelism, and across every strata influence. That is kingdom advance. So whether it is through your offering, through your singing, through your preaching, anything at all that is scriptural and can lead to the enthroning of Jesus Christ is kingdom advance this is our mandate the church is only as good as its ability to save sinners and to turn those people to become kingdom ambassadors witnesses indeed I'm yours, Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. I'm yours, Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me whatever you want to say Lord you can say through me whoever you want to bless Lord you can bless through me whoever you want to Lord, you can lift. That is the song of a witness. Whatever you want to start, Lord, you can start through me. Whatever you want to end, Lord, you can end through me. For I'm yours, Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. I'm yours, 
Jesus, I am yours. Listen, can I tell you? The ones who will enjoy longevity, the ones who will enjoy the divine backing of heaven are not just those who say, I am a Christian, but those who are actively involved in this kingdom come project. There are people who the devil will not come and oppress anyhow. The jealousy of God has been invested over them by reason of the role that they play in the kingdom. It is these people that the Bible says he suffered no man to do them wrong, that he even reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. You can be so involved in the program of God that he will invest his jealousy and his dedicated attention upon you. Can I tell you God loves everybody but he does not trust everybody. It is clear from scripture. We're wrapping up. This is my final session with us. And I'm hoping that I was able to contribute to fanning that flame within your spirit to be at the epicenter of God's program. For some of you, the call tonight is to stop playing religion. God is calling you into an experience that is deeper and richer than just looking for food or building a house. These things are wonderful, but your life must be at the center of kingdom come. Someday, this life will come to an end, whether we like it or not. And I can tell you, when you stand before him, it's not the amount of cars you bought. As important as that is, it is not the educational or academic, it is not the, the entire, our definitions of success. Everything is only successful to the degree to which it reveals Jesus. Listen very carefully. We're wrapping up. Let this burn in your heart. This has been my drive. It's not ministry that is my drive. When it's all be said and done There is just one thing that matters Did I do my best to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done All my treasures will mean nothing only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time. Lord, your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious joy in married clay turning sinners in to saints and I will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life is gone At the end of your life, the hymn writer says, must I go an empty handed? Must I meet my savior so? He said, not one soul to greet him. Must I empty handed go? This is a call to go back to our lives and say how much of my life is truly in God's kingdom come project. For some of us, you need to go back and find from these seven mountains the area allocated for you. And for some of you, you may be saying, dear man of God, I've missed it, time has gone. Then you can invest in training those who are coming. Let their success be a consolation to any failures that you may think you had. You are not a failure if you raise a success. You only fail when both you and the ones after you fail. There are three things I'm going to do right now. One is I'm going to make an altar call. 
And then number two, I requested that we come with our prayer request and just one minute very quickly, if I'll be given that privilege to speak over our requests and then generally just speak over our lives, particularly those who are trusting God for healing and for strength. I don't know if we can have, um, whilst I'm making the altar call, please may I request if you are yet for any reason to drop your prayer request, may I please request that you gently without distracting, especially for those outside, may I request that you just wave it and there should be an usher. Thank you. There should be an usher or somewhere. There are still people waving. Please, let's, if we can just pick their request. No, you don't need to turn it. I'll just pray on it there. I want you to believe in the God of heaven who is about to arise for you. We're wrapping up. Let your heart be open. Mm, mighty God. Now you are here, seated inside and outside. And you know that with all that I've said, you need Jesus sincerely. Perhaps you were not here or you were not convicted enough the first time I made that call. This is our last session. Jesus is giving you a chance. Two calls in one. You are saying, I sincerely desire to make it right with Jesus. Tired of playing church, tired of playing games. I want to make this decision for Jesus. And then you are here and you are saying, Apostle, I love Jesus Christ, but for some reason, my life has plunged into a decline and I know that I'm not living as a Christian. I need to get things right. I need to rededicate my heart and my life to Jesus. Please may I request, I just have one minute for you because of our time. If you're here in the congregation, I will want to plead with you to please just come and stand here very quickly as I make that altar call. I'm going to count one to five. For those coming outside, um, once the stage here is filled, then we'll have to create an extra stage there. I know that there are people coming. Let's celebrate them as they come. One. Two. Are you coming to Jesus? Win that war finally over your life and destiny. Young and old, male and female, Jesus calls you into a new and a rich experience. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have life eternal. Are we celebrating them as they come? Very quickly. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. If there are still more people, you could create a space for them outside and they just follow through the screens. The front is full here. I salute you. Thank you for the courage to come. The Bible says, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. May I please request that you lift your right hand high above your head and pray this prayer from the depth of your heart. Mean it as you pray. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive you as my Savior. I receive you as my Lord. And I receive you as my King. I declare that eternal life is mine right now in Jesus' name. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these ones. They have made this declaration of faith as touching their salvation. I decree and declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And I commend you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the word of God that you be grounded and established in righteousness. 
in the name of Jesus. From tonight and hence you go forward ever and backward never. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Someone direct me. Okay, please all of you, may I request that you move to my left, which is your right. Let's celebrate them as they go. The counselors. Hallelujah. Is it all right if I request that we stand? Please. Creator of the universe, what can't you do? What can't you do? Jesus. Name above every name. Name above every other name. What can't you change? What can't you change? What can't you change? Jesus. you to stand because we're about to pray and all of you who are following by way of television you are following uh, through the internet I want you to believe right now it says unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come hallelujah now I just want you to stand in faith as I pray whilst you're standing I want you to agree and to begin to declare that in the name of Jesus these Egyptians I see today I will see them no more forever. Go ahead and begin to pray. Just whilst you are standing. I'm going to bow my knees and lay my hands upon this request. And you don't have to kneel with me. Let me bow my knees like Paul would do to pray. For the next one minute, I'd like you to agree. The God that has honored Equa Plateau Church for all these years is about to rise for you again. In the name of Jesus the Bible says when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion it says we were like them that dream I'm about to make some declarations over this and I just want you to believe the Bible says what things soever ye believe ye desire it says when ye pray believe that thou receivest it and thou shall have it you can bring it please what things soever ye desire in the name of Jesus Christ the one who has honored Equa Plateau Church the one you serve and love and believe I decree and declare that everything written here that represents pain represents reproach represents any kind of discomfort I call upon my God right now in the name of Jesus, let it be turned to your testimony now. Let it be turned to your testimony now. Everything that is demonic, that is the reason for this to be put here. I call upon my God, who is also your God. May he arise on your case. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak to you, standing upon the grace of our fathers, the eldership in this church, that these Egyptians you see today, may you see them no more forever. May 
you see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Um, I know that it's not something strange. Please, if there's anyone under the anointing close to you, just help them. We're not so that we don't get distracted. In the name of Jesus, I am praying. There are people who have not been able to move forward. He said, Moses, tell the people that they go forward. It is God that moves people forward, but he puts that word in the lips of men. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, go forward. I decree and declare, make progress with your life. Hallelujah. I'm praying for you now. But the Lord is putting in my spirit, I'm seeing the number six. And there are six people here, there's been all kinds of oppression over your family. I'm praying right now. Please, I want you to help them. I just saw fire. The Lord is bringing deliverance. I command every demon, every principality. This is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every spirit behind the problems of people in this church, every spirit, behind the pain and the stagnation of God's people in the name of Jesus the son of the living God be free now for the Bible says he that the son sets free is free indeed I declare your liberty now in the name of Jesus Christ hear me every orchestration of darkness every legal claim that Satan is making over your life the Bible says blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us I stand upon the faith of our fathers and I decree and declare be delivered now activities of witchcraft and culture by the power that raised Christ from the dead be set free now let me pray for your spiritual life everything that has brought your spiritual life down you were not like this before now your fire has gone down now your word study life has gone down may fresh fire come upon your life in the name of jesus christ listen to me the bible says and jabez was more honorable than his brethren the mother called him Jabez because she bore him in sorrow. And he got to a point where he said, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. I'm praying for someone here that in the name of Jesus, that name Ichabod, that name Jabez, that means the departure of the glory. We change it right now over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I was contemplating whether I should share this vision or not because I didn't want to create any problem but while I sat down there before I came up I looked and I saw it was like a dark a dark blanket just over this building and the Lord said to lift it that there is something that has pressed this I don't know what it is I'm just coming here but I stand in the name of Jesus Christ and I decree and declare that everything that has tied down this church by the power that raised Christ from the dead lift up your heads O ye gates lift up your heads O ye gates over Equa Plateau Church lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted up everlasting doors in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. The plague of sudden death in this church, in the name of Jesus, it comes to an end now. Hallelujah. Hear me. Anybody who says, let us see what you will become, indeed they will see God lift you. Indeed they will see God honor you in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah 
let me pray for every home here everything that represents shame and reproach it looks like you are serving God and people are saying where is the evidence may God use your results to answer them in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah please hear me there is something in the Bible called the book of remembrance I am a product of the sacrifice of this church do you know there was a time where Mordecai saved the king and he was not rewarded the Bible says that night could not the king sleep may tonight be that night he said bring me the chronicles and he said who has rewarded this man many of you have raised others like me but nobody has come back to reward you may my God who is a covenant keeping God begin to visit you begin to visit you begin to visit you Sunday school teachers may my God visit you different departments elders who have labored in this church may this be the season where my God will visit you hallelujah for the families that are here I want to prophesy Psalm 112 he says blessed is the man that feared the Lord that delighted greatly in his commands he said his seed shall be mighty upon earth that the generation of the upright shall be blessed he says wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever I decree and declare no family here will be an instrument of shame and mockery in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for the youth in this church let there be an emergence of young men on fire responsible young men and women dedicated young men and women this church will never lack hands to hold up the banner of the gospel in the name of Jesus Christ please hear me anybody that walks into this church assigned by Satan to bring down the walk we build a spiritual fortification and we decree and declare Equa Plateau Church you will not die Equa Plateau Church you will not fall Equa Plateau Church you will not fail it is from glory to glory to glory to glory finally I decree and declare the spirit of unity like never before the spirit of love hear me please this night is a night that all grievances all issues if there be any no matter how age long when God the Bible says you cannot put an old wine a new wine in an old wine skin for many of you here maybe grievances with parents grievances with elders listen let me tell you this when God is doing a new thing you must be like Joseph let go he said this one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind I press I press I press that every EPC member who is seen will be known by their love genuine love for Jesus and genuine love one for another I decree and declare may the spirit of love rest upon everyone in the name of Jesus Christ and that next year by this time you will be a thousand times greater may men and women of influence rise from this church influence even in government influence in business influence in media in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Heavenly Father I want to thank every one of you sincerely our elders my wonderful parents my dad and mom is here can you please help me bless God for them hallelujah praise the name of the Lord and the entire committee that made it possible for me to come it is an honor I do not take this for granted thank you for giving me the opportunity to bring Jesus and truly honored may the Lord bless you let it be for us all from glory to glory I forgot I said I was going to pray 
for the sick. Would you spare me a minute for that? Please, if you are trusting God for healing, just lay your hands on your chest. We'll just do this in one minute. I believe in the healing power of Jesus. I am a product of his healing ministry. I can see online prayer requests. Someone is saying healing for my dad from prostate cancer, deliverance for my brother from every bad vice. Jesus Christ still heals. It is true that he does. Hallelujah. Let me just pray that prayer in one minute because there are people here who the doctors are doing their best and we pray that God will empower them to continue. But there are many infirmities whose origin is from the spirit. Whether it is high blood pressure, whether it is cancer, diabetes, bone conditions, eye conditions, the Bible says he healed them all. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, I bring life and healing to your body. Life and healing to your body. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I declare that that pain leaves right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. For some of you, you may need to go and see a doctor even after this conference. And you will find out that things have changed. I decree and declare it is so for you according to the word of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.